theory behind optimizing a structure is to find the lowest energy in order to distribute its electrons and nuclei most stably. This is really important because when you're using a molecule with the correct geometry and docking it, it reflects very accurate scores. Um, we're going to be considering the molecular mechanics, semi-empirical da um, data, density functional theory, and ab initio to solve wave functions, force fields, and the quantum mechanics involved in um, how a a molecule has its geometric shape. But the cool thing is that Gaussian and Gaussview do all, or sorry, I should say the Gaussian application does all this for you. Okay, so I went ahead and I pulled up Gaussview, which is under class software, and it's right here. And I pulled it up so we can see what a blank canvas looks like and what the builder looks like. And you could find the builder under view and builder. All right, so the first thing I wanted to point out is how you have a periodic table to choose the atom of your choice along with the different fragments you want it in. And even if you don't choose the right fragment, say I chose this and I wanted to create a bond between these two, I could easily use this application and connect these two like such. Now this creates a double bond between a nitrogen and a carbon, and I don't want extra um, hydrogens, so I would just use the X application to take away however many ap uh, hydrogens that I want, or if I wanted to get rid of molecules entirely. You could also delete uh, things that you just did or hit the undo button by using Control plus and Z, so that comes in handy when you're trying to go really quickly through this. You also see this um, ring application, which gives you the ring fragments to speed up your work, which is so, so cool because it gave, since I have two benzene rings, I can automatically just plop them in. So we're just going to go ahead and do this. And when you're using your mouse, um, just click on a molecule and move your mouse back and forth to rotate it. And when you are zooming in or zooming out, just scroll in, scroll out. If you want to directly move the molecule, put your finger on top of the little wheel and pull whichever way you want. So since I have two benzene rings, we're going to go ahead and do this. Um, I see there's an amine group standing between them, so I will place a nitrogen here. And since this nitrogen only has one H, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of two of the other H's and get rid of these two H's because we want to account for the octet rules when we're building. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and build two bonds between the nitrogen and the carbon of the benzene ring and this one as well. Okay, so this might not look very pretty, so that's why we have this little broom button. It's called the um, cleaning option, so if you hit it, it'll change just a bit. But just looking at this, I'm not very satisfied, but by these two hydrogens being so close together, so because the Gaussian application might notice this and make errors when calculating um, the geometric shape and it might put atoms where they're not supposed to be so just be aware of that we're okay so there's also some chlorides here here and there's also a carboxyl group so we're gonna go ahead and select the c again here here actually that leads to my other point. So if you want another functional group, you could click on this R application and it pulls up a nice table of known functional groups that you could use or manipulate. So since we have a carboxyl group, I'm going to go ahead and just click on one of this, these hydrogens and we automatically have a nice carboxyl group hanging off here. Um, you could clean it, but that might cause Actually, that's not too bad. So yeah, I went ahead and I cleaned it. Okay, so looking at this, I know that a carboxyl 
group actually has a pKa of 4, so in physiological pH of 7, this hydrogen would not be present. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this so that we calculate this entire thing to have a net charge of negative 1. And you have to be aware of the different kinds of groups, again, because it's so important for calculations. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and rotate this so these two atoms aren't so close. So click on four molecules with the bond in between that you want to rotate and it's going to pull up this where this bar allows you to rotate whichever way you please so i'm going to try to rotate as far away as possible and that should do it so now you see that they're nowhere near each other and i have a feeling that's how it's going to be calculated anyway all right we're going to go ahead and try cleaning and that looks good so we're going to keep it that way and we're going to save this Let's call it, oh, make sure you save it to the desktop, always important. And you're going to call it DCO1. Make sure it's a Gaussian input file and save. Now we move on to optimizing your structure of the small molecule you built in Gauss view. So I've highlighted some important parts that you have to review or at least understand in order to know what these tools are doing. We are opening the class software to start up Gaussian 09W. We can load up the DC01 Gaussian input file that we saved from our earlier session in Gauss view. And this is what pops up. We have to adjust this. So what I'm doing now is changing what memory is allocated for the computation, and I'm changing the methods. Recall, we're doing the semi-empirical method to do our optimization. So that's indicated by the AM1. Opt, in case we want to do a geometrical optimization. And the FRQ I've just typed down is related to a frequency calculation that we will use later. Charge and multiplicity is another very important point that we have to look at. Recall that this molecule is actually negatively charged by 1. It's negative 1. And therefore, we have to change up the multiplicity because multiplicity helps us look at the unpaired electrons. It is a formula that helps us look at the unpaired electrons. 1 would indicate that they are no unpaired electrons. So if we add the charge and we adjust and then we change the multiplicity to 1, this is correct and would allow the computation to move forward. If we left it at 0 and 2, the computation would not move forward and we would get an error. So now we're removing some extra lines and we're almost ready to run our optimization. But again, important to double check everything because Gaussian is very much like a calculator. You have to look at your structure because you want to make sure it is there's nothing strange or off with it and then your inputs as well when you're putting into the calculator so now we run and there you will be indicated to save the gaussian output file which can be used for further analysis later so here you can see gaussian running its calculations if you can see this running and there's no error message and we come to this uh, termination at the end right here as you can see uh, Gaussian's termination, then that means your optimization has proceeded successfully and you can now double check. Additionally, notice the DCO1.out on our desktop. This is the out that we indicated we wanted to produce with our Gaussian optimizations. It gives us the optimized structure of our molecule. So now you can view your Gaussian out file in Gauss view as seen here. And it's important to do that actually to ensure everything is normal with the structure post optimization, just ensuring everything is bonded and not overlapping. It's part of one of the quality checks you should be doing right after your optimization to ensure everything is in order. The final check that you can run is by checking frequencies. You can check that by going to the results, vibrations, and then looking at the frequency column. 
If there is a negative number, that indicates an imaginary frequency. If there isn't any negative numbers, then you're ready to go and move on further in this course.